For five years, I was constantly working on my thoughts and just to relive life. And at the same time, I was doing career. And my career really started to hit big time directly after I was diagnosed with cancer. Weirdly enough, it was like catapult. And I felt this, and for me it took over a year to come back because I was very, very um, weak. I lost a lot of kilos and I got very skinny. Okay, I'm pretty skinny now also. But uh, I didn't lose my hair, but it stopped growing. I had like this for a year. Nothing more, nothing less. So it's very convenient. And um, I lost all my color. I know I'm white. I got white, white. And uh, I tried to get back a little bit too early. So I tore off both my calf muscles in one go. It was not so delicate or nice. So I just really had to stop life, <laughs> center, focus and think all the time. At the same time, I was uh, a lot with my best friend who also had the same thing. So we were going in and out of the hospital. It was like high five in the door and she was on her way to get uh, cytostatica. And me leaving it. It was like this. Really strange. Two years ago, um, I was called back to um, Sweden to, to do a checkup for the whole thing at the, at the hospital. And I was, was very, very, very nervous because I just went there to sit down and get something, a result presented to me, however it was going. So that was two years ago. I was on my way home and I had been here in, in uh, Romania for almost, like, I had been then in here two and uh, one and a half years. And I was building up the company that I work in. Um, me and my colleague, Julio Papi, we have a company called Move On Fitness Education. So we work with, uh, we educate people in fitness, how to become teachers and so forth. Everything that has to do with physical activity. And I'm working really, really hard. And I had this luggage here all the time in the back here. But my work and my center always focused. It has kept me there because I know the disease is only temporarily here. I decide that. I needed to decide that for my own that it was like this. And work gave me a lot of empowerment because I had the chance and I took the chance to come to Romania and start this that wasn't existing so much before I came. It's a golden opportunity and I love what I do. And I love being here in Romania. And you are a much, much more warmer type of people than in Scandinavia. Both temperamental and not. And so I feel that this is something that suits me very, very, very well. Uh, I was building the company and everything is going really, really well. Focus, focus, focus. To the day I work on this. And um, I was going back to Sweden. I went to Stockholm. The day in the morning I was going to the My doctor, and I couldn't sleep the, the night before because I, I cannot describe the feeling when you are just waiting for a message of something that will determine for sure if you're going to live or not. So I came there and uh, we sat down and we started talking and uh, I don't remember anything of what he was saying, nothing. And I was sweating in my palms, I was sweating everywhere. I have red eyes, I was just waiting for him to say something. And then he 
took up his paper and he said, uh, according to your results, Mr. Markusen, uh, you are now cancer free. And um, in that second, I started crying. Because it was like the biggest stone ever that you just... <sighs> but during these five years, it was so much build up and trying to understand what do I do, how should I feel, and at the same time, my best friend was also in the same situation. Uh, we were very close and we worked very close together. So, of course, I called her directly after. And uh, it's, a, it's a bittersweet feeling. I was so happy. Uh, of course, the the first person I called was my mother, and then my sister, and then my aunt, and then the rest of the world. And I remember I called uh, Camilla. And Camilla, she's an um, enormous free spirit. She lived for this second, and still she had it. She is an educator in Scandinavia in uh, communicology and um, also in teaching. Fantastic personality. She has her life here. And we were talking and she asked me how it was going. And I told her, and the way she shows her happiness, her, her sincere happiness, you can, you can feel. And I felt I couldn't be too happy because she hadn't gotten her results yet. So I really didn't know how to, what to do. Uh, but I tried to keep my happiness a little bit like dampened. But it was anyway a good feeling. Last summer she called me in June and she asked me if I wanted to come to her birthday. Uh, and I couldn't because I was very busy, but I said, I'll for sure come to the next one. But then she died. Two months after the invitation for her birthday, she passed away from cancer. She passed away in August. And, um, I was so lucky to make this. So, so, so lucky. But I really, really had to work on this. She lived her life on a... She was determined and she lived her life by her word. It's gonna go good. But in the end, it went good in a different direction. And the weird thing is that her Facebook page is still active and I can see our messages. And the other day I went through my telephone and I saw her messages to me and how happy she was when, uh, after I got my, my good news. But I still feel that she's very, very close here and she always will. But she left nothing to any circumstance. She just went full on with her life, despite she was under this not knowing what is going to happen. Every time I met her after my good news, she was still filled with life and with hope. And I'm so impressed that even you are in a situation where life is about to take away from you, you still focus positively. I think that is a world champion, for real. 
Sometimes it happened. Sometimes it happened the other way. I'm just very, very, very happy that I can stand here today and do these things and talk about this. For me, I really... I can talk about my life and these things that happened and every time there is a different nuance of what I'm saying and I learn something all the time. I think about my words and what I'm saying. But I'm just, I feel that to have the possibility to do what I do today and continue on life in the positive, positive way is something that I've learned from this trip. And I really try today, this day, to really live in the present second. If I go to the subway, for example, today it was like this. I took off my, uh, my backpack and I kept it between my legs and then you have 10 other people coming in with backpacks and they turn around and they hit 20 people like this. And I was like, when I see this situation, I'm just, I'm laughing, I miss like a part of who we are and what's going on and, and everybody stays like this, like squeezed fish in the subway and uh, if it's raining outside, I don't care, rain is good. If it's sunny outside, I love that too and I love snow. Love it. I wish it was six months more snow here in this country. But you only have one and a half or two. Now it's summer for me. And in two weeks I want to go and swim in the river. But I really, really try to uh, appreciate these small moments. And just breathe and sit and be. Because I think that is exactly what life is about. Instead of running. So, uh, to, to sum up everything, life has a tendency to become how you focus. No? So, if you focus on a bad thing, it will be bad. And if you focus on something good, it has a bigger chance of being good. It's about the choices we make, purely simple. Good or bad. And I chose to focus on to live. Will you ask?